evening. We welcome you to another Good News broadcast. It's a pleasure to be back with you tonight, and we have uh, some very serious uh, prayer requests, and uh, we need to uh, think seriously and uh, be obedient unto the Lord. But we have uh, Brother Joseph Dockery with us, and Sister Judy Crowder is on the telephones. Uh, we have Brother Tim Green and uh, his men, um, Bob Watson, and we have Jack, and we have Glenn Kerrigan with us. And uh, so they're going to be singing for us. Brother Gilbert uh, was a little bit afraid to come uh, from Taylorsville to Hickory uh, because of the weather that they're, they're calling for. Uh, but, you know, we're here. Uh, we're here to serve you. We're here to bring you the good news. And uh, we always can find something good to say about the Lord and what the Lord has done. I pray that you'll enjoy the, the singing tonight, and I appreciate the compliments that I get in the mail uh, about the singing and the preaching. And uh, we're here to uh, just to bring you the good news, what God can do and what the Lord Jesus Christ can do. Uh, there has been a request sent in for prayer uh, for Diane Hamby, Bill Lefevers, Sherry Miller, and also Amanda Glispie, and Libby uh, needs prayer. She has a lot of health issues, and we need to remember her in prayer. Uh, we're going to let these gentlemen go ahead and bless you in a song. Go ahead, gentlemen. When Jesus came into the house that day, at his feet the sick did lay. As he healed them one by one, his father's work on earth was done. He said, take up your bed and walk. Take up your bed, the master said. Take up your bed, Jesus said, and walk. There Appreciate that song, Brother Tim, and you kind of hold on to it because I'd like for you to sing it again a little later on in the broadcast, if you would. Uh, Nancy needs prayer for health. Uh, she lives down in Wadesboro, North Carolina. Also, Charmy from Mooresville uh, needs prayer for strength in her body, her hands and her feet, whatever. And uh, also, Dorothy from up in Morganton needs prayer also for health issues. So let's remember these dear, precious people uh, in your prayers. And also, I would like for you to pray for Pat Walker and Wanda Rose. And this request was asked by Linda and Lee Epley. So let's remember these dear folks in prayer. Gentlemen, go ahead and bring us another song. Everybody that's been questioning this If you don't love your neighbor, you don't love God.
kicks into trouble and you don't, don't try to help him. Then you don't love your neighbor and, and you don't, don't love God. These are some good songs they're singing tonight, and we need to think seriously about what the words of those songs are telling us. Some people say they love the Lord, but they can't love their neighbor. That's not, that's not a very Christ-like and a Christian attitude, is it? Uh, Jane from up in Morganton uh, needs prayer, and she needs prayer for strength and healing in her body. Also, there's a special couple down in Matthews, North Carolina, down in Monroe, rather, uh, Robert and Jeannie Deese, and uh, those two people really need our prayers. And Sister Jeannie, you don't owe me no apology. Uh, you really don't. Uh, it's just good to be able to know how to pray, and we never know how to pray for people unless we really know the battle that, that is raging. And thank you so much for your letters and for your uh, contributions to the Good News program. And we'll continue to pray and trust God for a miracle. And miracles do happen. But we're going to let the gentleman come and bring us another song. You'd be much in prayer for him. Like a baby who cried for his mother. I was helpless and oh, so alone. Then I met the master. Now I am one of his own. For all things were changed when he found me. A new day broke through all around me.
sorrow I was helpless to go so alone Then I met the master He changed me and gave me a song For all things were changed when he found me A new day broke through all around I want to send a prayer and a song out to Peggy Webb, and to Susie, and TJ. Uh, Mr. Tollison needs prayer for himself and the family, and also for Miss Regina. And he wanted to hear the song, God on the Mountain. Um, prayer for the family, uh, Lloyd Hall. Uh, he passed away this week, so let's remember these dear folks in our prayers. Uh, also, uh, Regina and Donna and Amanda and Jaden needs prayer. Uh, all of these are with COVID, so just remember these dear folks. And you know, it seemed like I thought maybe that these, this thing was going to begin to slow down, but uh, it seems like that it's trying to to pick up again but you know God is the answer to all of our problems uh, we're going to let the gentleman go ahead and bless you in another song go ahead brother Tim with your men there's a dark and a troubled side of life there's a pride and a sunny side too though we meet with the dark Dear precious mom or dad called and has requested prayer for their daughter, uh, Kimberly Marlowe. Uh, Kimberly is very sick. She has the inner ear disease. Uh, also, Wanda Green is having tests, so remember her in prayer. Jerry Dula, 
he wanted a song called The Family Circle. So, gentlemen, if you uh, have that song and you can sing it, that would be a blessing to them. And also, Judy Stinnette wanted a song in prayer, and she wanted to hear Kneel at the Cross. And then we have another song in prayer uh, for Jackie Patterson. She has need of prayer for her legs, and uh, she wants to hear a song. So, Brother Tim, y'all go ahead and uh, just go ahead and do two songs in a row, if you will. Down here my burden's heavy And the road is rough and long Sometimes my feet get weary and so sore But a brighter day is coming Soon I'll rest on heaven's shore And I won't have to worry anymore I won't have to worry when I reach the other shore All my troubles will be over And I'll rest forevermore My eyes will be on Jesus And my heart will be aglow And I won't have to worry anymore See my Savior standing on that shore. Then I hear him say, You're welcome. All your cares are left behind. And I won't have to worry anymore. I won't have to worry when I reach the other shore. All my troubles will be over. And I'll rest forevermore. My
a blessing and we need to be a blessing one to another and I want to take time just to say to you that give on the broadcast that you are such a blessing through your ministry of giving because without you we wouldn't be able to be here and sometimes uh, it gets a little rough it gets a little tight and I know that people are doing the best they can. And, you know, I was sitting here thinking about, I've been here now going on 22 years. It doesn't seem right, like that, does it? And I probably, out of 22 years, have been out maybe five Saturdays, five times. I've tried to be faithful unto the Lord, and I want to be just as faithful with the TV ministry, and to you as I can. And I want you to know that we appreciate your donations that you send to the broadcast, and uh, that's the only way we can be here is this through your giving. Uh, we don't have uh, organizations or uh, big companies and things like that that support us. Uh, most of the people that support us are, are just good uh, Christian people who love the Lord and um, a lot of them are elderly people and they're not able to go to church but yet they find a way to sacrifice unto the Lord and later on I, I've got a special letter I want to read to you and, and we're going to do some really serious praying tonight. We need God to move and do a miracle. And it's time that we as Christians get a desire in our heart to see the hand of God move upon people's lives and see things happen. Now, it's a wonderful thing for people to get saved, but what about those who are in financial trouble? What about those that are uh, sick in their bodies? Uh, what about the obstacles that comes our way some are in captivity. Some are in bondage. We all at one time was in the bondage of sin, but there are other bondages also. There's a lot of things that, that is there that shouldn't be there uh, because when Jesus came, Jesus came to give sight to the blind, uh, to make the lame and the halt whole. Uh, he made the lepers clean. Uh, he delivered those that were in bound and, and was in captivity. And where is this happening at today? Where, where is this, the miracles of healing? Where are they? Are we depending too much on the doctors and the man-made medicine? And I, I'm not criticizing medicine. I know that God gave men the ability to be scientists and to study medicine and to make something to help make us better. But that, well, what would we have? Have we substitute medicine bottles and material things in the place of God, in the place of Jesus Christ, the one who shed his blood and spilled his blood upon Calvary and bore the stripes upon his body for the healing of all sickness and all disease? Has that what's happened in the world today? Have we swapped the material things don't you think it's time to have faith in God and let God work in our lives? Alton Clark and Herschel Reed and Frankie Reed and Ruth Reed and family needs prayer. They've asked for prayer, and they wanted to hear a song. It's an old, old song, In the Sweet 
by and by. Billy Henderson uh, needs prayer for his eyesight. Frank Termeyer needs prayer for his health and healing of lung disease and pray for his wife, Carol. Prayer for Joseph for salvation. Pray for those with COVID and pray for Catherine. And this is what I'm saying, people. We need to get down to serious business. We need to see God touch these people and deliver them and to heal them and to set them free. We need prayer for Donald and also Charlene. Charlene had a fall and needs prayer. And a listener uh, has neck and shoulder pain. And he has a pet that uh, I think that has a heart problem and wants us to remember his pet, his dog, in prayer. And uh, we try to fulfill your wishes and your desires, and we pray that God will move in behalf of these needs. Uh, Brother Tim, y'all go ahead and bring us a song. I had nothing but heartache and trouble. I had troubles and heartaches and pain. like to uh, ask you to remember the family and friends of Bill Hall. We know Brother Bill passed away back before Christmas and you know it's hard at holidays when uh, people you know lose their loved ones and also I'd like for you to remember my brother-in-law and a sister-in-law from down in Statesville, Brother uh, Ed Patterson. He's been a blessing to so many people. And also to Mrs. Betty Jo McDaniels. And uh, please pray for her. She has, uh, in her time, she has lost a husband and two sons. And uh, I know that it has to be hard when you lose family members. And I know how it was when I lost her sister, my wife, Hazel. And uh, it's not an easy thing. And it takes time to heal uh, when things like this happen, especially uh, unexpectedly, you know. Uh, we've had uh, 15 givers this week. And... Uh, these are the ones who have given on the broadcast this week, and uh, we thank you and we 
praise you for what you're doing for the Lord and for your faithfulness. Uh, Linda and Lee from Morganton, uh, Nathan and Betty from Matthews, Patty from Morganton, Jane from Morganton, Joyce from Gastonia, Philip, Kathy, and Lindsay from Morganton, Dorothy from Morganton, Louise from Gastonia, and Charmy from Mooresville, uh, Dennis and Lily from Marion, uh, Jeannie and Robert from down in Monroe, North Carolina, and Nancy from Wadesboro, Gertie from Stanley, Harvey from Stanfield, and also we had a listener from over in Lenore. He, these are the ones who have given on the broadcast this week. Thank you so much for your gift unto this ministry. We're going to ask the men to bring us another song, and then I have a special uh, letter I want to read, and then we're going to go to the Lord in prayer uh, concerning your request and your needs. <clears throat> go ahead, Brother Tim. My builder, my builder in heaven is waiting for me. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. He gave me life and a new day to lift it me up. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, we have a few more requests here, and then I have a letter I want to share with you. And then we ask you that to be sincere in your prayers. It's time, I feel like, that we need to really trust in the Lord. And is anybody hungry to see a miracle happen? What's happened to miracles? 
ACCORDING TO THE WORD OF GOD, SIGNS AND WONDERS AND MIRACLES ARE SUPPOSED TO FOLLOW THEM THAT BELIEVE. WE SAY WE BELIEVE, BUT WHERE IS OUR FRUITS? BETTY BOLTON AND BARBARA GRIFFIN AND FAMILY NEEDS OUR PRAYERS. PRAYER FOR LISA'S FAMILY, THEY HAD A LOSS OF A GRANDFATHER, SO PLEASE REMEMBER THEM. ERNEST EARP AND MARY EARP NEEDS OUR PRAYERS. THEY NEED PRAYER IN THEIR BODIES, AND ERNEST HAS MANY PRAYER REQUESTS FOR FAMILY MEMBERS AND LOVED ONES. Uh, THELMA, uh, MAY, CUTSHAW NEEDS PRAYER. Uh, ALSO, JAMES HICKS IS IN THE HOSPITAL AND HAS COVID. Uh, ALSO, A SONG FOR LINDA CLARK, RICK, AND NIKKI, uh, PRAYER FOR JEAN Curtsy AND IVANEL HICKS. Uh, ALSO REMEMBER MARSHALL TIG IN PRAYER. Uh, HE'S HAD A STROKE. I THINK HE'S FROM UP HERE IN BETHLEHEM. Uh, BETTY WIKE HAS HAD A CAR WRECK OR HAS BEEN IN A WRECK AND IS IN THE HOSPITAL, SO REMEMBER HER IN YOUR PRAYERS. I WANT TO SHARE SOMETHING WITH YOU TONIGHT AND WE'RE GOING TO PRAY HERE JUST IN A MINUTE FOR ALL THE ONES THAT HAVE CALLED IN THEIR PRAYER REQUEST. AND IT'S GOOD TO HAVE WITH ME TONIGHT, AND I KNOW A LOT OF YOU KNOW HIM AS BROTHER JOE, BUT SOME DON'T KNOW HIS REAL NAME. HIS REAL NAME IS BROTHER JOSEPH DOCKERY. HE GOES BY JOE, BUT HIS LAST NAME IS DOCKERY, AND SOMEONE HAD ASKED WHAT WAS BROTHER JOE'S LAST NAME. WELL, BROTHER JOE'S LAST NAME IS DOCKERY. AND I RECEIVED THIS LETTER IN THE MAIL, AND IT SAYS, PASTOR VARNER AND BROTHER JOE. WE'RE THE FAMILY FROM OKLAHOMA. WE'RE WRITING TO YOU ABOUT OUR DAUGHTER, LINDSAY, WHO WAS CALLED HERE FOR HER MUSIC MINISTRY, BUT WAS STRICKEN WITH SOMETHING LIKE CROHN'S DISEASE, AND HAS BEEN SICK WITH THIS FOR THE LAST SIX YEARS. THE PAIN IS VERY SEVERE. SOMETIMES SHE'S IN BED FOR DAYS. WE KNOW GOD IS A HEALER. SHE WATCHES YOUR PROGRAM EVERY WEEK AND PRAYS FOR THE ONES YOU MENTION ON THE PROGRAM THAT NEED PRAYER. OUR DAUGHTER HAS SERVED GOD HER WHOLE LIFE. WE ALWAYS SAY SHE WAS A BABY CHRISTIAN EVEN WHEN SHE WAS A VERY YOUNG CHILD. SHE KNEW AND LOVED THE LORD AND WOULDN'T HAVE, AND WOULDN'T WANT TO BE IN A FAMILY THAT DIDN'T LOVE THE LORD. BROTHERS, WE NEED, OR WE WOULD ASK YOU AND BROTHER JOE TO PRAY FOR HER, AND WE'LL GET IN AGREEMENT WITH YOU BOTH, FOR WE KNOW THIS WOULD HELP HER A LOT. SHE HAS NEVER LOST FAITH THAT GOD IS GOING TO HEAL HER OR BEEN ANGRY AT GOD. SHE LOVES THE LORD WITH ALL HER HEART. I'M HER DAD, AND I ALWAYS TELL HER THAT SHE'S MY HERO BECAUSE FAITH HAS NEVER WAVERED. SHE WOULD RATHER HAVE THE LORD AND BE SICK AS TO BE WELL AND NOT HAVE THE LORD IN HER LIFE. SHE IS TRULY A BLESSING SENT FROM GOD FOR ME AND HER MOTHER. WE NEED A HEALING. THANK YOU BOTH FOR ENCOURAGING US AND WE PRAY FOR YOUR MINISTRY AND WOULD ASK EVERYONE WATCHING THIS PROGRAM TO PLEASE SUPPORT IT. LOVE YOUR SISTERS AND BROTHERS IN CHRIST JESUS. Yes, Lord Jesus. MY FRIEND, IT'S TIME WE GET SERIOUS. IT'S TIME TO EXPECT A MIRACLE. LET'S PRAY AND LET'S BELIEVE GOD TONIGHT. SIX YEARS OF PAIN AND SIX YEARS OF IN THE BED AND OUT OF THE BED, BUT YET HAS NEVER LOST FAITH IN GOD. OUR FAITH SHALL MAKE YOU WHOLE. OH, MY FRIEND, MAY THE HOLY SPIRIT OF GOD MOVE UPON YOU, AND MAY YOU FEEL HIS SPIRIT MOVING AS WE FEEL HIS SPIRIT MOVING. Philip, Kathy, 
we are standing in agreement with you. And Lindsay, I praise you for your faith. And we know you're standing in agreement with us as you pray for others with your pain-stricken body. But we're going to God in prayer. We're going to agree and we're going to believe. Because I want to tell you something. When Jesus bore the stripes upon his back in the hall of judgment, the palace hall of judgment, they weren't just put there so that man could scorn and laugh and make fun and say, look what we've done. We've really beat him. He bore those stripes because it was prophesied that he would bear those stripes for the healing of all sickness and all disease. Come on, people, what is going wrong? Where is our faith? Is our faith dead? Is our faith in the things of this world? Or is your faith in God in heaven? Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you tonight. And we lift you up and we glorify you and we magnify you. And we thank you that Philip and Kathy and Lindsay are staying in agreement along with our other prayer warriors tonight. And Lord, we're asking you, Father, for signs and wonders and miracles to happen. This is a good news program. Father, we need some good news to bring to people, to encourage them and let them know that God is God and God don't change. God is alive and God's not dead. And we ask you, Almighty Father, may the Holy Spirit of God move upon this body. We rebuke this disease that's up on her in the name of Jesus. For by his stripes ye were healed. By his stripes ye are healed. And Father, encourage everyone, Lord, that is sick and discouraged and has financial needs whatever their needs are. Lord, you strengthen them. You help them. You encourage them, Lord. And Father, most of all, manifest your power and your healing virtue in these testimonies, Lord, that they may be witness for you and for what you have done. For we agree and we ask it in Jesus' name and we call it done. Satan, it's done. It's done in the name of Jesus. You've got to move your hands off of her. And we ask you, Lord, to have your way, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to talk to you about a very familiar story about a man, a man whose name was Job, and there was a book written, the book of Job. In the beginning of Job's book, it says there was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. I want us to look at this man. This man was perfect and upright and one that feared God. Amen. Perfect, upright, and feared. Oh, I can't live perfect. But we strive for perfection. The Word of God teaches us to strive yes. for perfection. And we must walk upright yes. before Him. And most of all, we should fear Him because He is the one who has the power to cast our soul into hell. And who wants to go to hell? He has the power to heal, to deliver, and to set free. Now this man was blessed of God. God blessed him seven sons and three daughters. Ten children. Even his substance was blessed. He had 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 
and 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she-asses, and a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. Why was he like that? Because he walked, he was a perfect man. He walked upright before God. He feared God. Now his sons went and feasted in their houses, every one his day, and sent and called for three sisters to eat and to drink with them. Could Job help what his children were doing? But it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and he offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all, which would have been ten. And Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned. Are you concerned about your children? Are you concerned whether they're in sin or are they sinning? And he said, and cursed God in their heart. Thus did Job continually. All the time. All the time. Amen. Do parents today, are they concerned about their children's salvation? About where will they spend eternity? What are they doing? Are they serving God or not? Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. God had called these men. They came before God. But notice something here. And try to keep this in mind. Here was a man that was perfect. Here was a man that walked upright. A man that feared God and eschewed evil. But something hit his family. Hit his life. Where did it come from? So when the Lord had called these sons of God up before him. Satan came also among them. He didn't call him. He just came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto him, Satan... Has thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? God knew Satan's thoughts. He knew what Satan wanted to do. Then Satan answered the Lord. He said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Has thou, has not thou made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Look, behold, all that he hath is in thy power, and only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord, and there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. Now it all began. The prince and the power of the air, the devil himself, has started at work. I don't hear of someone else here but Job. Why would it be Job? Because Job was a perfect man, an upright man, one that feared God and eschewed evil. When we're born again and we become a child of God, are we not being made perfect and have we not been made to walk upright and have we not had the fear of God put in us and are we not taught to eschew evil, to turn away from evil? And those that obey the Lord and follow Him will do that. 
So anytime we do that, you can expect an attack from the devil. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them. And the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. And while he was yet speaking, there came another and said, The fire of God has fallen from heaven and hath burned up the sheep and the servants and the... Uh, consume them, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Lord, here's a man that was upright and perfect, a man that loved and feared God and was blessed of God, blessed with all these sheep, blessed with all these camels, blessed with all the oxen and the she-asses and the great household. This man was the greatest of all men of the East, but now he's been attacked While he was yet speaking, the third one came and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and carried them away. Yea, and has slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped to tell thee. And here, while he's speaking, the fourth one comes. Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house, and behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house. It fell upon the young men, and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. And then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground, and he worshipped. He didn't fail to worship God. He didn't get angry at God. He worshiped God. And he said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. I know things happen in our lives and the devil tries to destroy God's children. God didn't call Satan up there. He called the sons of God to come before him. But guess who came along? The devil. And wherever you go, even if you go into the house of God to worship God, I'll guarantee you the devil's going to come too. He's come too. And I could go on, but our time is running out, and I want these men to go ahead and uh, take us off with a song. And I hope that you will think about this and understand, as a child of God, you're going to be in battle with the devil. But don't hold God responsible. The devil's the one that's responsible for what happens. Don't give up on serving God. Don't give up on your miracle. Don't give up on your answer to prayer. Job never gave up. And Job suffered affliction in his body, and we won't cover that tonight. Maybe we can cover it at another time. But you'll find that Job stood true to God and God blessed him in the end with more than he had in the beginning. Praise Twice God. As Twice as much. Isn't that wonderful? That's what God will do. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. When Jesus came into the house that day At his feet the sick did lay As he healed them one by one his father's word Your 
So much to think. 